In the name of Jesus, amen. As you know by now, we are going through the penitential psalms, psalms of repentance, during this midweek Lenten services. Tonight we will focus on Psalm 6, a psalm that we sang earlier. It is a psalm written by David. Psalm 6 is a prayer for deliverance, a plea for God's mercy. God first puts to death, then he makes alive. Jesus first had to die before he could rise from the dead. So also, King David in Psalm 6 first fears God's wrath against sin, then he trusts in God's mercy and forgiveness. And so also for us, first, the law shows us our sin, we are sorry for our sin, then we trust in God's mercy and forgiveness found only in Christ. <clears throat> in verse 1, the psalmist prays to God saying, O Lord, rebuke me not in your anger, nor discipline me in your wrath. The psalmist knows that he is sinful by nature. He knows that God is a God who is angry against sin and a God of wrath because of sin. Therefore, the psalmist is asking God not to rebuke him and not to discipline him. David knows he deserves it, but he prays for mercy. God calls his work of the, the law his, his alien work. Luther calls this God's alien work. <clears throat> God does not delight in administering his anger or his wrath upon us poor sinners, but he does so that we are led to God's proper work, namely his work of mercy and forgiveness. First, God works repentance in our hearts, a heart of sorrow over sin, and then God works faith in the forgiveness of sins. The psalmist then pours out his emotions. He says, I am frail, my bones are trembling. I am greatly troubled. I am weary of my groaning. Every night I flood my bed with tears. I drench my couch with my weeping. My eye wastes away because of grief. It grows weak. We see here the psalmist is struggling physically, emotionally, and spiritually. He struggles in both body and soul. Luther calls this anfaktung. It's a German word which simply means the state of despair. <clears throat> we see this in Jesus. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he also struggled emotionally and physically. His sweat was like drops of blood. He wrestled with the upcoming pain of crucifixion. He asks the Father if there's any other way to bring salvation to a fallen world. And it is as if the father said, no, my son, you are the only one who can make the perfect payment for the sin of the whole world by means of the cross. <clears throat> and even there on the cross, Jesus, we see his emotional and physical struggles. He cries out, my God, my God, why? Why have you forsaken me? We also see this in our own lives as well. Living in a fallen world, we all suffer from anfektung, a state of despair. Yeah, we've got bad days, days of sorrow. And dur during these difficult days, we cry out, <clears throat> Lord, I am frail. My bones are trembling. I am greatly troubled. I flood my bed with tears of repentance. I am physically and emotionally drained. 
We've got those days. The psalmist not only sees God as a God of wrath, namely God's alien work, but he also sees God as a God of mercy, namely God's proper work. He pleads to God saying, <clears throat> Be gracious to me, O Lord, heal me. Turn, O Lord, and deliver my life. Save me for the sake of your steadfast love. So you see, the psalmist recognizes God as a God of grace and mercy, a God who heals, a God who delivers, and a God who saves his people from their sin. God is gracious and merciful. He delivers us from evil, and he saves us, not because of our works, or not because of anything inside of us. Rather, the psalmist pleads for God's grace and mercy and for salvation, quote, for the sake, O Lord, of your steadfast love. In other words, God is merciful to King David because of the coming Savior. We see God's steadfast love for King David in the coming Savior. And this is exactly what Jesus did for us. We see God's grace and mercy upon us poor sinners in the person and the work of Jesus. God delivers us from evil on account of his son. He saves us from our sins because of the death and resurrection of Jesus. And the, this gospel then is God's proper work. By nature, God is a God of mercy. We not only drown the old Adam in repentance, but we also come alive in the forgiveness of sins. Because God loves us, we can approach him with faith that he hears our prayers and that he forgives our sins on account of Christ. <clears throat> in verses 8 and 9 of our psalm, we see King David respond to the gospel with faith. His faith comes out. Listen, he says, depart from me, all you workers of evil. For the Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. He has heard my plea for mercy. He receives my prayer. Again, David knows who God is and what God has done for him. And we can say the same thing. We can say to the devil and the evil world around us, depart from me. I am a baptized child of God, redeemed with the blood of Christ. God has heard my sound of weeping and has removed my sin as far as the east is from the west. I am, when I am in need, God hears my prayer. I have faith in him as my creator and redeemer. He is my refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Yes, we can speak in faith like this to our enemies, the devil, and the world. So God is a God of wrath and anger, to be sure. But most importantly, he is a God of grace and mercy. He kills, but then he makes alive. Jesus first died upon the cross, then he rose from the dead. Our old Adam was drowned in the waters of holy baptism, but God made us alive in Christ Jesus. Romans 6 says that we were buried and raised with Christ in baptism. God also brings us out of darkness into his light, and he has converted us by means of the gospel from unbelief to faith in Christ. The psalmist asks God to, quote, deliver my life and save me for the sake of your steadfast love. And this prayer for us is answered in Jesus. During this Lenten season, we focus on the cross of Christ, which then leads us to the celebration of the resurrection of our Lord on Easter. God has delivered us from eternal damnation. 
and he has saved us from our sins on account of Jesus. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.